G'day. I was talking to a, a fellow hobby machinist the other day about uh, all sorts of bits and pieces and he mentioned he's had some trouble getting some threads to size. And so uh, I thought to myself, well, I might throw a, a few things together that I've um, learned about doing threads over the years. Uh, some of them people may know about, some of them may not, some of them may, you may disagree with. Leave a comment if you do. Uh, this is just some stuff that I've picked up over the years which may help you either get some better threads or explain some of the things that, that uh, the reasons why things work as they do or whatever the story is. To start with there are a couple of tools you'll need. This thing is called a fishtail gauge. I'm assuming because it looks like that. And on here it's hard to pick up in the, on the camera but uh, on here there is uh, profiles for 55 degree threads Whitworth. There's an Acme there. There's a 14 and a, a sorry a 47 and a half BA thread, and there are some 60 degree uh, American and metric threads. So you need one of those for two reasons. One is to check your your tool, and so you do that like that. And if you're regrinding your tool, uh, you can also do that. The other thing that you, you want to do use this for is setting up the tool. When the tool goes into the tool post, you'll put that against the work. So, and that'll, that'll allow you to line that tool up so it's actually square with the axis of the lathe. Uh, if you're not careful, if you just you know, throw these things into your tool holders uh, or on the, onto the tool post without thinking, you might kick it over a few degrees and that'll give you a, a strange thread which won't necessarily mate with, with uh, what it is you're wanting to do. For threading I use high speed steel and I've got just a, a cheap diamond lap that I use for just you know giving the, the sides a bit of a, a dress. The sharper you can get your tool the better uh, and so yes yeah, so I'll, I'll you know give that a few strokes there there there. Um, some people put top rake on their on their thread cutting tools. I don't. It causes a few problems which I'll get to later on but the advantage for me is that I can then regrind this tool and not have to worry about the tip having a, a slot through the middle because someone has, has put some, uh, some uh, relief in there. Another thing you want is uh, some thread tables. Now I use a, a Zeus book. These things aren't cheap. They're 20 plus dollars a piece. There are others out there. I think Bordeaux do one and a few other people do them. But the important thing is that you've got the information on the threads you, you want to cut and if I just pick one, where's the metric? There's the metric there. So these are, these are standard threads but you've got OD, what the core diameter of the thread is, what the pitch of the thread is, the depth of cut and this is all in millimetres, flat uh, I think is, the, is, is on the end, end of the form, uh, end of the thread form there, uh, effective depth, don't worry about that one too much, your tapping drill and your clearance drill. Now this is actually handy for nuts because if you say um, I want a nut with a, a two millimeter pitch, if you take your nominal from your tapping drill size that'll tell you how much you need to bore the hole out. I have my stock set up in the chuck. Uh, this is turned to uh, three quarters of an inch and I'm going to put a 12 TPI thread on there. That's not a standard size but uh, this is just to demonstrate and a 12 is, is big enough that uh, you can see. Now I'm not going to cover setting up your change gears or all that sort of stuff because that varies depending on the lathe. Uh, similarly the, the thread indicating dial um, that differs on the lathe. Before I start cutting the thread one of the things I will do is put a, uh, a bit of a, a chamfer on the, on the front of the thread. It just makes it a little bit easier to start in the nut and it's one of the reasons why there's a little bit of a notch in the side of this tool back from where the, the actual thread cutting happens is because that's what I, I do. I put a 60 degree uh, chamfer on the. I use what's called the plunge method to cut threads which means I have my compound slide parallel to the axis of the lathe and that's handy for a, a couple of reasons. Um, for smaller lathes people talk about offsetting it you know 29 degrees or 30 degrees or, or whatever the story is. Um, yes you can do that 
uh, and I'll, I'll let uh, other people explain that one to you. But I find that this is is uh, you know a pretty robust sort of method. I've I've used it on a much smaller lathe than this. Some of you know if you're trying to cut tough steel uh, on a small lathe, then you need all the help you can get. But uh, as it is, not too bad. I've wound my tool up so it's in contact with the work and I've zeroed the dial. Now this is nominally three quarter inch. I have gone a little bit under because it just helps once again when, when assembling it. Uh, if you've got a thread which is size for size it can sometimes jam. So a little bit under and by a little bit I mean um, you know 0.1 of a millimeter, 0.05 of a millimeter. Uh, so what's that two to four thou? something like that. Uh, it doesn't hurt the thread, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to start. I'm going to go to my Zeus book uh, because this is an imperial lathe I'm going to use um, the imperial side of things. Now three quarters as I said it's a non-standard thread I'm, I'm actually using a 12 TPI and so the major diameter of a 12 1 inch 12 UNF is one millimeter uh, is one inch sorry and the depth is uh, 51 thou. Okay, so I need to, this lathe is, is the, the cross light has graduated as diameter, so I need to go in 102 thou. And so, you know, even though I'm using a, making up a thread which isn't standard, I can, I can use that data and do some, some basic maths and work that one out. So, what I'll do is I'll probably start off. Um, in say you know 10 or 20 thou increments and then when I get to around about the 50 thou mark I'll, I'll step that down to maybe if I start off at 20 I might step that down to 10 until I get to about 75 thou and then I'll step down to fives and so on. I've put a couple of passes on here and I'm up to about uh, 60 thou of my 102 thou depth couple of things. One is I've, I've actually put some texture on here so it's, it's a little easier to see. Now most times with particularly with metal you probably don't need to do that but if you've got something like plastic uh, which is either white or black and, and the, you know the contrast isn't there then sometimes that'll help. Uh, don't have to do it but it's just something that does help and particularly in this, partic in this case uh, it makes it easier to see what the width of the, the crest is like. One problem that people sometimes have is that they, they set up in their, um, their lathe to do a, a, a thread and then they get interrupted, they have to break that setup down and think, oh darn, what do I do now, how do I get this thread back? Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And this is one of the reasons I, I do the, 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 the plunge cutting because I've got the cross slide to, uh, to help me. So. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I've lost my, my place. I start the lathe up and then leaving the tool disengaged, I'll stop it halfway along the pass. Right, so I'll engage my, my threading mechanism to, to drive it along, but then I'll, I'll stop, okay? Okay, I've stopped. Now, this, this means that all the backlash in the gear train is driving the carriage forward. What it means is you can come along and wind your tool in and pick up on the groove. And one reason that the, the um, plunge method helps you here is that if you find that you've, you've lost a, um, a, a step or something, you can't quite get it, you can use your compound to move the tool back and forth and find your your spot. Now I happen to know that it was right forward so I'm, I'm all good there but if I needed to I could I could just juggle that around a little bit and find the, the find the, the sweet spot carry on from there. Okay so that's how you pick up a thread uh, when you when you're interrupted or you have to interrupt halfway through uh, and that can be that you need the suddenly you need the lathe for something else or it could be that you need um, you've had a crash or something like that and, and you're not quite sure whether things are lined up and by all means if you have a crash stop and check. I've as I said I've done about 60 thou of, of the 102 that I need. What I'm now going to be doing is I'm, I'm, 
I started off doing 20 thou uh, feed in in plastic. You can you can do that, and even in metal you can do that when you're first starting off because the the amount of tip doing any work is small. But what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to step up in um, 10 thou increments, and then when I get to about 75, I'm going to drop down to 5 thou increments. But once every couple, two or three passes. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave the the setting on the same thing and and run that through and do a spring pass. And that way, I don't have a build up of material, because the problem with the, with lathe tools and particularly if you're cutting an internal thread is they spring. And so if you let all that build up and you get down to the end of the thread, you don't know how much material you're oversize versus. Um, you know what it what it should be and so if you do your spring passes as you go along you're more likely to have better control over the, the over the thread and you can see here there's just the faintest trace of green on the threads so we're almost up to the to the uh, to the peak there but those last three passes were all done at the same uh, depth so the first one took off quite a bit of material because it was 10 thou up from the last pass uh, in plastic you 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 can do that but the next one you still saw some material come off the last pass you saw very little come off it was mainly just bits of fluff and so that's that's what your spring pass is trying to do is to get down to that final size i've set up to cut my nut uh, i'm hoping that this will this will work i've got the cut in the right spot because uh, it was done on the bandsaw and uh, i'll be able to uh, to to show the cutting as it as it goes on this is where i'd really like a strobe light but i haven't got one so you know you just have to um, see what happens. As you can see, I'm using a boring bar uh, with my, my high speed steel tip here. These things do deflect, so once again, spring passes, depth of cut are all very important. Uh, I have a larger one which I, I made. Uh, there's a, a video about that somewhere for doing bigger threads, but unfortunately, it won't fit in here. Same thing applies though, although this time you're doing it when you're boring and so you get down to the end of the hole and you have to push the tool back that way a little bit and then withdraw it. Some people put a relief groove down the bottom. One of the things about relief grooves, particularly on threads like this, is that if you're screwing up to a shoulder, you might want a relief groove there so you don't have to worry about the imperfect threads at the, at the bottom there. People ask what sort of speed should I be doing this at? Well, it's basically as fast as, as you feel comfortable. Uh, typically for that, I use about 80 RPM. This one I'm down to 29 just because it's a blind hole and I'm threading up. Uh, I'm use, I've got a dial indicator down here to tell me when I get down to depth and then I'll disengage the feed, push the tool over and then you know, wind it back ready for the next pass. The same thing applies here if you get interrupted as to the other ones, but it's a lot harder to see, so you know you try not to get interrupted. I'm nearly to depth here now. If this was a a full nut. Um, I would, I'd be trying my threaded piece in there and just seeing how it how it would fit. Because I haven't got that all the way around, uh, I can tell from the looking at the threads that it's probably a little bit small still. But what I find is that if I've got my my sample thread or my my matching thread that that goes in here and it'll go in a turn or two, but then no more, it usually means that I need another thou or two off the thread. And so I'm, I'll, I'll put that on in a minute. Now, I haven't done it with this particular uh, thread, but particularly when I'm cutting threads in metal, where the, it, throw, it can throw up a burr, I will run a file across the top of that just to make sure that is under the, uh, the, the, the diameter, the, the major diameter of the, th the thread, because what you don't want to happen is for this to be a little bit on the large side and then get jammed up in the nut, not because the thread doesn't fit, but because of, of burrs on here. So, that, and that's one of the perils of using a, uh, 
a tool with no top rake on it is that it can throw that burr up. So I'll run a, a you know, typically when doing a metal thread, I'll just run a file across there just to knock the threads off. I'll then do another pass, spring pass, just to take any burrs out that have crept down inside the thread. Um, and that way I, I know I've got a clean thread that it's, that it's the right size. But uh, as I said, this one here, not quite right. So I'll give it another pass or two. And there you go, that's uh, oh, roughly 15 minutes, I guess, of, of uh, single point turning um, download information, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I've, I've picked up over the years. Uh, it's the sort of thing that I would have said if someone had come into my shed and said, I'm having trouble with single point turning, could tell me about it, is, is what I would have, uh, would have said. So um, there you go. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.